What, are we some kind of suicide squad? I am Iron Man. You are a toy! I live my life a quarter mile at a time. Trevor Anakin! I have the high ground! I'm gonna steal the Declaration of Independence. I'm simply saying that life, uh, finds a way. Welcome back to the Big Movie Boys podcast, the only podcast nostalgic for a decade that ended before its own birth. I'm your host, Jeremy Baumann, and with me as always is Bob Liebel. What's up, everybody? Glad to be back in person. And Ben Stitch. Yeah, I can't believe we are back in person. Bob, do you know how many episodes it has been since the last time we did this in person? Me and Jeremy talked about it before. 100. (laughs) 50? Bold (laughs) guess, considering this is episode 45. Um, no, just joking. Um, I don't know. I would say at least 10? 24 episodes in Jesus. Pop. No wonder you lose all the changes. <laughs> I gotta stop drinking, dude. Holy <laughs> shit. You tell me I missed 14 episodes? It's been six months and Bob thought it was 10 episodes. <laughs> oh, wow. Yikes. And Ben helped me do the math. It's been seven months since our last best of a decade episode. Wow. And what decade? The 90s? That was the last decade we could probably probably say movies and it it was like a thing we could like actually talk about yeah him. and now we're into a, the 80s where it's gonna be a rough deck it's gonna be a bloodbath we're, we're apologizing to gary already a lot of heat is gonna come out of this we will have to make that determination one determination we didn't have to make though was who won the big madness boys bracket if you don't follow us on twitter at big movie boys we held our own little march madness tournament with all 48 of the movies that we have reviewed competing against one another ultimately ending with National Treasure taking the crown. How do we feel about not only the winning movie, but the tournament as a whole? Any good matchups, any upsets that really shocked you? I have no problems. I think the, the right team or the right movie won, without a doubt. Yeah, Nash, I was, uh, I was definitely thinking it would be National Treasure versus Goodfellas. I voted for Inception in the final four. But, you know, I, everyone's happy about this one. You, you know, National Treasure, a heavy, heavy favorite coming into this, and it just it, it fell the way it was supposed to. It sucks with Inception and Goodfellas teaming up against, or going against each other, and Elf and National Treasure. Elf didn't stand a so chance. So Elf, National Treasure, Goodfellas, and Inception were the final <laughs> four. I called that from the start, just yeah, the, by looking at the, the, the movies. The Goodfellas, Inception side of the bracket was definitely tougher. And uh, National Treasure more so <laughs> had, a, had a nice walk in the park to yeah. the final. They had an easy draw. What was the final score in that final matchup, Joe? Do you remember? Uh, it was one vote separating. I believe there is... Get the a, fuck out of town. Well, here's the thing. I, I may have uh, persuaded the outcome here a little bit. I think there were nine votes, and National Treasure was losing by one with two hours left. And I retweeted it and said, we have two hours to prove National Treasure is a better movie than Goodfellas. And with 13 total votes, I believe it was split 7-6 in favor of National Treasure. Wow. Well, you didn't do it from the Big Movie Boys account, so it's not it's not. Uh, I did not. It was it's my not own too personal cheating. account. It's not cheating there. One of the uh, more exciting matchups, though, was the Hubie Halloween Uncut Gems matchup. I know. I, did. I, I wasn't ready for that Adam Sandler matchup. That one went to triple overtime. That was, <laughs> that was a tough, <laughs> tough game. Who did you vote for in that one, Bob? What, who do you think? Hubie Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> That's my favorite for, movie. I, I think I voted for Hubie Halloween, too. And that is, uh, I was really hoping that Hubie would like somehow make it and be the the winning movie at the end. (laughs) That was my dark. That was your national treasure. Yeah. I think my most upsetting loss, I voted for Citizen Kane to beat the devil all the time only because I wanted national treasure to beat Citizen Kane. I thought that would have been a good matchup. Were you the only person that voted for Citizen Kane? No, it had a few. It it definitely didn't win, but it had a few votes. And Bob, uh, another thing I noticed Lord of the Rings. None of them made it out of the second round. Mm, I don't know. We just have. I wonder. I wonder how many Twitter accounts Jeremy had to make and vote on this. The most surprising of those uh, combinations there was uh, Pirates of the Caribbean on Stranger Tides beating Fellowship. Well, I did not vote for Pirates of the Caribbean. I'm not entirely sure how that happened. I don't know who voted for that. Who even follows this account? But that's interesting. Yeah, so uh, next year, if you want to be part of the uh, the madness, be sure to follow at Big Movie Boys. Unfortunately, that is all we're going to be speaking on National Treasure for the day, which is unfortunate, but that is because we have so much stuff to get to in this episode. Boys, it's a packed one. Of course, we will be getting to the best movie of the 80s, and you all know that we are waiting desperately for Bob's punishment review of The Avengers. We're going to start it off with a little segment that will be continuing for the next six episodes. 
where Ben is going to be doing the dirty work for us, watching every episode of The Mighty Ducks Game Changers on Disney+, Plus, which just came out this past Friday. Ben, I have a question for you. I think I know the answer. You are watching The Mighty Ducks Game Changers. Are you also watching The Falcon and the Winter Soldier? I was just going to say, I know a lot of people are watching Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and I just... I feel bad for them that they're missing out on great television. They're watching good TV, but they're missing out on great television. You guys, Gordon Bombay is in rare form. This dude... Drunk? I, 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 want, I should have watched this how Gordon Bombay just is. He looks like he's got liver failure from the, the preview. He's not doing well. He hates hockey. He hates hockey, dude. Jogger. He just attracts single moms, though. That, that part of him will never go away. Oh, the drunk driving alcoholic? <laughs> Attracts single mothers? <laughs> That's weird. That doesn't Dude. sound on brand at all. So I mean, we talked about this earlier. The ducks are the bad guys in this one. Mm-hmm. And they're they're assholes. They're basically the hawks. And uh what are they? They've won ten straight state championships. So it's it's just it's big fucking I can't deal. wait until six episodes from now when this ragtag team beats them. And they the name of this ragtag team that they're pulling together? The Don't Bothers. What? That is the name of this team. It pissed me off. I'm like, don't we couldn't come bothers. up with... Why? What's what is their, their logo? Yeah, what is their... I don't... They don't have a logo yet. They don't the, bother to have the one? The teams are the Bears, the Ducks, the Hawks, the Cardinals. There might be another one. And then the Don't Bothers. It's like, we just couldn't come up with one fuck. The Cheetahs. Are the Hawks still okay? Or are they just... No, the Hawks are just like one over? of the teams now. Yeah, they oh, are. Oh, shit. Which team uh, got the measles or whatever in the movie and they couldn't play? I think it was the Bears. Okay. <laughs> I... Glad to see that they made a comeback, though. But uh, so they they only need six players to start a team. I, I we watch hockey here. Well, not anymore because the Sabers are terrible. But you need like twenty people yeah. on a hockey team. No, 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 no six is gonna cut it. Six players play at a time. Every uh, <laughs> every player's getting sixty minutes of playing time. That's it's, it's uh, tough. <laughs> nothing like having twelve year old kids burn out and play a full game. But basically, so the kid, the first episode is just the kid, the main kid. I don't even know his name. I should probably start learning these characters. Sounds like a good show. It's not Charlie Conway. I know that. Just but call, he, for the second, just call him Charlie. Char, so Charlie, <laughs> Charlie's trying to like get the group of uh, his friends together to join the team. And then his mom's the coach. And then by the end, they're just trying to get Gordon Bombay to be the coach, even though he hates hockey. And then it ends the ends with uh, your your girl, Lori Laughlin. Is that it? Or, in or is that Graham? the one who went to Lori jail? Graham, I, think. I think that's Aunt Becky, yeah. <laughs> So, all right, well, uh, the girl from uh, Gilmore Girls, she ends up doing a figure skating routine to a Whitney, Whitney Houston song, and then the episode's over. So you already know I'm excited for week two. Was it good? I think I unironically laughed at one thing, and then the rest of it was just so bad that it was funny. I, I, it's like watching a car accident, and I can't look away. Is uh, Lauren Graham good? She clearly has a body double when she skates, so okay. that's fun. Nice. But, I mean, she's all right. Did you, you know? chuckle? Did she make you? I'm a big fan of her. So didn't she didn't make me laugh once? R- Only... Was Rory in it? Or no, she, she, her uh, daughter in another show is not in this. Oh, shit, man. <laughs> but it, like the whole point is like they start off the episode with this one kid. They have the second best podcast in regarding Pee Wee hockey in the area. Wait. So I felt <laughs> a little a kin- I felt a little kinship to this kid. It was uh, he's the short little chubby kid. He's not good at hockey, but that's he had one joke and it was funny. I'm like, okay, I like this kid. What's the name of the podcast? Do you remember? Fuck. What if we just stole it and we make an entire podcast about, <laughs> about Pee hockey I'd be in, in Minnesota? In Minnesota, I'm in. Well, yeah. That's got to be illegal for some mid twenty year olds to do that, right? <laughs> I think just by virtue of us being the only podcast talking about this show, we are the biggest movie podcast talking about the Mighty Ducks Game Changers. We have to be. I'm I'm very excited to see where this goes and to see Gordon Bombay just slink down even more until he's he's back on top again. I just hope that Rory Gilmore shows up, just like uh, Lee Remini did in that one Kevin James show. <laughs> oh, yeah, just remember that? Back, yeah, when they killed his wife and brought his wife from another TV show in, <laughs> the King act, and Queens act, acted yeah. like nothing happened. No, it's great. The, That's the, what I hope happens the in, best, this, in this show as well. The best part about it is Gordon Bombay hates hockey, hates it refuses to be Love a part streaming. of it. I remember that part from the movie. <laughs> but he owns a skate rink totally for people normal. to just skate around. If you hate hockey so much, just maybe don't be around ice. But uh, yeah, it's, it's good to maybe see Emilio Estevez back. Uh, you sent me a Snapchat, and it seems like they are paying homage to the original movie when it comes to how they portray hockey. Yeah. Uh, Bob, I didn't send it to you because I, I don't know if you know I wouldn't pick up on it, but... The, the this one girl goes on she's got a breakaway clearly slides the puck to the bottom right of the net 
next cut, the same shot is top left corner, and you just love to see how bad the editing they is. Didn't, they didn't learn from the first, <laughs> first movie? One with Charlie. They did learn. They learned that that's the way to show hockey in a movie. This feels like a quibby thing, though, where it's like, it feels like it's just a movie, and they've broken it up into six parts. But I'm, I'm How long I'm is it? It was 35 minutes, so times Oof. six. About a three-hour movie, I'd watch it. <laughs> the epic conclusion to The Mighty Ducks is three and a half hours. Well, I am excited to, uh, to hear how episode two goes. You, you sold me on not watching it and letting <laughs> you continue to watch it and report back on it. I can't it. wait. Uh, but it sounds like uh, the second punishment of the week was uh, Bob watching The Avengers. If you missed last week, we did a big movie boys challenge. Ben pitted Bob and I against one another. And uh, because we were watching Zack Snyder's Justice League last week, we thought it was fitting that the Punishment movie be The Avengers, of course, 1998's Avengers, not 2012's Avengers. <laughs> Two very different movies, Bob. Which one did you like more? Oh, my fucking God. This is probably one of the most punishing Punishment movies that was on that list. I texted you guys in the middle of it that I literally didn't even feel like I was watching a movie, and I finished it. Let me first say that it took me four sittings to watch this 90-minute movie. That's a me move. Dude, I couldn't watch more than 20 to 25 minutes of it at a time. I literally, I didn't even feel like I was watching a movie. Like, let me, let me actually start. I'm just going to read off, because I don't even know how to talk about this movie. That's how bad it was. I'm just going to read the, uh, the synopsis just right off of Google. A charismatic evil genius named Sir August Day Winter, played by Sean Connery, discovers a way to harness the weather and utilize it as a weapon against London and the world at large. The posh and droll combo of secret agents John Steed, played by Ray Fiennes, who apparently is Ralph Fiennes? It's Rafe. Rafe? It's spelled Ralph, but it's pronounced Rafe, yeah. Okay, I always tell his name's Ray, R-A-Y, Fiennes. <laughs> and then I see Ralph Fiennes on the screen. I'm very confused. Anyway, Lord Voldemort. Um, <laughs> and Emma Peel, played by Uma Thurman, um, are on the case... Uh, but then Peel is implicated in the sabotage of a government scientific experiment. Steed and Peel try to clear her name while also trying to stop Day Winter for good. Reading that, that's actually not what happened in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> um, basically, you have this super weird, like, secret agent. Like, it's like a London thing. They call it the Ministry. And there's these two figureheads called Mother and Father at the top of it. Mother is a, is a man and Father is a woman. That'll get you. I don't really know what they do. They seem to be in, like, in charge of this secret agency of sorts. And Ray Fiennes is like just a generic uh, fucking like spy. Is I this think? not a Marvel movie? No, not even close. Oh, not even, shit. Yeah, it's not at all. No, like nothing to do this with it. This has nothing to do with the. Wow. It's okay. like a spy movie, basically. So he's a spy and he meets up with Uma Thurman. And I don't really know what their relationship <laughs> is at all. Like, I think she's also a spy, but for, like, a different agency. And she's, like, really smart and, like, super, like, supposed to be, like, badass. And then, like, midway through, like, literally halfway through the movie, Sean Connery comes in. And I thought he was the good guy. I was like, oh, he's trying to help them, right? <laughs> like, he's, it has nothing to do with the weather until the last, like, 15 <laughs> minutes. Like, I read that. And it says, like, he's trying to harness the weather. He doesn't do anything or even mention the weather <laughs> until, like, the last 20 minutes of the movie. It's basically, like, Uma Thurman and Ray Fiennes are, like, like the most forced couple of all time. They have the most awkward interaction ever. Like, kind of flirting, but, like, not how a human being or even a fucking <laughs> robot would flirt. It's just, like, it's just so weird. It's so cringy, and it's just odd. And then at one point, there's, a, a, like, a, a twin of Uma Thurman. Like, literally, like, an identical twin, and he's just like, I don't know which one's the good one and the bad one. And neither did I, because there was no... it involved weather. Why is there evil Uma Thurman? Beats the fuck out of me, dude. Um, they literally just, like, she's just in there, and she's battling herself. And then, like, Ray Fiennes is like, uh, I don't know who it is. And I was like, I don't either. And there's no way. They don't, they don't differentiate it. They don't... Do they kill one off? Yeah, one actually dies in a fucking weather balloon crash in the last 15 minutes and burns alive. And I honestly, God, think it might have been the good one that died. I don't know if it was like trying to be subtle and they're like, is it the right one or the wrong one? They don't really, they don't really tell. You. They just kind of just let it happen. There was so many times like throughout the movie, not even so many times, every, literally every minute of the movie where each scene felt like you were just dropped in the middle of the scene. I have no idea why they were there. I have no idea where they got there. I have no idea what they're doing. And it just like goes from like scene to scene just like that. You're like, 
this could, each scene could be the start of the movie. Because you're just like, what's going on here? And it, like, it doesn't carry over at all. There's no, it's not even like explanation. It's just like weird. Like, I don't know where Sean Connery's house is in this movie because they go to it like three different times. <laughs> they go to his house like three different times, three different ways, and it looks different each time. And I'm like, where are they? <laughs> I don't know where the fuck they are. And I couldn't figure out if he was good or bad until the end. He just started <laughs> killing people. And That's I, usually a friendly reminder. Yeah. yeah. But he, uh, he actually, his plot, and when I read the synopsis in the beginning, his plot gets a little more in depth. The way he's going to like, over the, the weather. world he's going to manipulate the weather and you have to pay him like bribe him to, to not to kill give you good weather in your city <laughs> he's just like i control the weather and it's going to be fucking cold every day unless i start getting some money <laughs> that's not even like that evil like he just he's yeah. monetizing the weather he wants, he, <laughs> that's basically what he's doing yeah and he also says he wants like 10 percent of like all of the british fucking money and shit it makes no fucking you want sense. you want sunday i want a billion dollars yeah it's literally basically what it was, and I was just like, okay, that's Honestly, absurd. if you can harness the weather, you kind of deserve to be rewarded somehow. Yeah. But once would, you start killing people, I guess that there it goes. Wouldn't you like to know how he did, like, how, how this machine works? <laughs> Me too. I have no fucking idea. They don't explain it at all. Uma Thurman ends up taking this machine, this weather machine down at the end. By, there's a scene where she's, she literally comes up, and there's a red wire and a black wire, and... I'm just like, oh yeah, that had to be something earlier in the movie because the way she was talking, the way she was acting was like it was like a callback to something earlier in the movie. But it fucking wasn't. She's like, red or black? <laughs> oh man, I don't know, red or black. It's always something that happens to me. Like, I'm like, what the fuck is she? Like, she's hinting that at things. That sounds like that... a scene they cut out. Maybe you Maybe. find out in the 2012 Avengers. You, uh, didn't, you didn't watch all the five movies that led into the Avengers. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Maybe I need the, 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 the Avengers cinematic universe. But uh, the budget was $60 million. Wow. Pretty, pretty substantial. In fucking, how, when was this? 90? 1998. And Jesus. we have, honestly, there's a bunch of nobodies in it, except for Uma Thurman, Ray three, Fiennes, though. and Sean Connery. Other than them, though, everybody else is nobody. But that, for late 90s, kind of star-studded. And honestly, there's some special effects and even some like CGI stuff that I'm like, that doesn't look bad. It truly doesn't look that bad. But when you sit down and listen to the dialogue and the actual like story structure, it's the fucking shittiest movie of it's all time. It's terrible. They probably just thought throwing a shitload of money at it would make it good enough. This is what I was thinking when I was watching it. I was just like, if you watch, you know how I told you that like all the scenes don't make sense and it's not cohesive at all. It feels like any scene you're watching could be the start of the movie. I'm just going to throw this on and I have like people over in the background <laughs> and I want to see how many people like look at it and like enjoy it. Like, wow, that was a cool looking scene. And then, like, if you watch for more than five seconds, you're like, what the fuck is going on? But the individual scenes, like, the CGI looks good. The fucking, like, I don't know, like, it looks visually kind of cool. Like an actual good movie? Yeah. yeah. But, like, if you watch it with, like, can't really hear it, like, there's music playing in the background, and that, like, just the, the video is playing, you'd be like, what is it? What's this movie? You know? But then you actually watch it, and you're like, this is... That's how I watch shit. most movies that we do for the podcast. Like so. <laughs> Did it earn its 12 on Metacritic? I think it might be the lowest rated movie we've ever had for a punishment movie. I think that might be high, if I'm being honest. Although, oddly but enough... It can't be worse than Cats. Um, um I don't know. <laughs> oh my god. Cats was more, like, brutal to watch, like, as in, like, I hated Cats. Like, I, well, it was pissing well, was me off. was funny to watch? That one was probably, like... This one was, like, just... Funny. This one was almost so bad that I could get enjoyment out of it. Like, almost crossed that territory, like, it's so bad, it's good. Because it was just, like, what the fuck is going on? It didn't yeah. piss me off. That's that what I thought it was until I saw the 12 on Metacritic. I'm like, oh no, it's just bad. No, it's really just... It's really convoluted. There is a part where Uma Thurman is where... She literally looks like black widow she's got red hair she's wearing like a leather jumpsuit and i'm like oh shit like this maybe this is maybe this is the <laughs> avengers but no it was truly awful i mean it was really it was one of the worst movies i've ever seen without a doubt yeah anytime you take uh four pauses for a movie i mean that's how i watch best pictures but yeah that, that's, that's for me too and time. i i never do that i literally was like watching it the first 20 minutes and i was just like fully sat down with the intent of watching it all because it's only 90 minutes I was like, I'm just going to watch it straight through. I'm just going to suffer. Watch the first 20 minutes. I was like, I can't do that. I, gotta, I, gotta, I cannot do this right now. Like, it was just brutal. It was so brutal. Damn. Well, it was a punishment movie, so I guess Fitting. it worked for that case. Let's get to the meat and potatoes, what we all came for. The first best of the decade that we've done in seven months. The best movie of the 80s. If you're unfamiliar with the scientific method we use to determine what the best movie of the decade is. We're going to go through each year in the decade from 1980 to 1989. 
I'm going to read off a list of movies. They're not all necessarily the best movies, but it gives you an idea of what came out each year. And then normally we would go around and pick our favorite movies. We're just going to name all the movies we've seen from each year. And then uh, from there, we'll narrow it down to what we think are the best movies. At the end of that list, we will have 10 of the best movies of the decade, one from each year. And normally, we have to come to a consensus on what the best movie of those 10 is. Now, I've been doing a little thinking. I've, I've gone back to the vault. I've re-listened to some of our other best of the decades. And although our method does have the uh, consensus of the scientific community behind it, I've noticed a bit of a flaw where oh yeah, whoever has seen the least amount of movies ends up holding the most power because no one's voting for movies that they haven't seen before. As they should. Dude, I vote for movies I haven't seen all the time. Not at the end, though. That's okay. Fair. At the end, we always pick a movie that all three of us have seen. So my proposal, throw a wrench in it, is at the end, we only need a majority vote. So if two of us can agree on what the best movie of the decade is, then we call it. That's fine. I agree. If it's Ghostbusters, I'm going to be really pissed, though. <laughs> I kind of doubt it'll be Ghostbusters, but we'll have to wait and see. Uh, a couple of little bits of trivia before we get into the list itself. Uh, the first one being, in the U.S., the PG-13 rating was introduced in 1984 to accommodate films that straddled the line between PG and R, which is mainly due to controversies surrounding the violent content of the PG films Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, and Gremlins. This is something that you guys have gotten hung up on a few times when we've reviewed 80 movies, 80s movies on the podcast. But uh, this is why we have PG-13. I didn't know that. I knew that it was newer, but I thought for some reason I thought it was like the fucking 60s or 70s when PG-13 was invented. I didn't know it was so relatively recent. I forget which movie we were doing that we talked about this. It was Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters. Okay, and uh, and Clue as well when we reviewed. Clue. Yeah, but it, it just a dirty movie. I just assumed it always existed. I did not. It, me too. I just always assumed. Yeah, I thought it was like sixties or seventies. I didn't know that it was that. There's movies that I would actually watch. Clearly, should be R. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then, if you remember the first decade we did, the 2010s, it was partially inspired by the fact that Quentin Tarantino called The Social Network the best movie of the 2010s. I wanted to agree. Bob and Ben shot that down hey, immediately. Well, he didn't have majority then, but it would have still had the yeah, same outcome. No fucking way. Uh, Tarantino, though, has voiced his own view on the 1980s, saying it was one of the worst eras of American films. Do you guys want I to shoot that opinion down as disagree. well? Disagree. I don't know. I might fucking agree. I don't <laughs> I was know. Going through all these, even just looking up the movies that, like, just to try to find the ones I saw, looking at the other movies in the same years, I was like, what the fuck are these movies? There is a lot of weird ones for sure, but like some of the, the ones, I mean, the ones that are on my list are... are like no, the ones good ones are, are good, the good ones but are then good. there's just a lot of weird fucking the random ones. middle of the pack ones are kind of not... I don't think remember. there are middle of the pack ones. That's how I feel. That's fair. I think with the 80s, there's huge blockbuster movies. Some iconic franchises came out of the 80s. But if you look at the best pictures, which I feel like Tarantino might be, you know, leaning towards himself. Right. They don't stick around. I went through this list. I, I made the list for every day. I have not seen a best picture winner from the 80s. Uh, no, I did the same thing because when I was doing the list, I would look up, like, for example, 19, movies from 1980 and then best picture 1981. And then just looked at the nominees and I'm like, Jesus Christ, these are, these are off. Yeah. Uh, a couple that I've, I've seen were nominated, but none of the ones that won. All right. Uh, before we get into the list itself, we all made our list of how many movies we've seen. Did you guys tally them up? I, I did mine differently because let me pull out my piece of paper. I'm going old school. I'm going to the, going to the 1980s. Just make sure I... you crinkle it into the mic <laughs> as much as you can. I did mine a little differently from you guys because my list was already made when Jeremy told us that and I wasn't going back through and recounting my movies. But I have on my list, I have 23 movies that I saw. And I actually have seven movies that are on my list that I didn't see all the way through, or I don't remember if I did see them. <laughs> I have 20 movies total, but there's probably only a couple that I actually haven't seen. So I've been putting in the work since we decided we were going to actually do the 80s at the beginning of the year. I have a total of 42 on my list. Mine and Ben's combined. I have watched... That's not true. <laughs> I have watched 16 80s movies in the calendar year of 2021. Three of those were rewatches, so 13 new movies in this year. So, uh, yeah, we're, uh, 
We're going to see how this one plays out. I think it's going to be pretty good, actually. I don't think we'll disappoint anybody at all. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see how that goes. We're going to start with the first year of the decade, 1980. The best picture of 1980 was Ordinary People. Biggest box office take of the year was Star Wars Episode V, The Empire Strikes Back. Other movies include Superman 2, The Elephant Man, The Shining, Caddyshack, The Fog, Popeye, Friday the 13th, Raging Bull, 9 to 5, Airplane, The Blues Brothers, Flash Gordon, and Xanadu. Bob, we'll start with you. What movies did you put on your list for 1980? Yeah, so for 1980, I have three of them. Um, first one on my list is The Empire Strikes Back. Probably the greatest, possibly one of the greatest sequels of all time. Uh, so that was a no-brainer for me. I also have The Shining, another no-brainer. Easily one of my favorite movies, if you have your pens and paper out. Probably a top ten. The Shining <laughs> is definitely in the top ten of my favorite movies. Um, and then the third one on my list for the year 1980 is actually another top tenner, and it's Raging Bull. <laughs> and I don't think you guys, have you guys seen Raging Bull? No. no. That, have to, that might be my number one movie to recommend to you guys. It's a Scorsese movie. Bobby De Niro's in it. It's in black and white. Joe Pesci's in it. It's a fucking sweet ass movie. Like, I know it was on Netflix for the longest time. It was even on my it. list, but I don't. Oh. oh, it's good. I don't know if it still is, though. It's, it's a real, 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 real good fucking movie. Like, like. Two Actually, top tenors from the nineteen two from top 1980s. tenors from the year of nineteen eighty. <laughs> That's incredible. And, and How many more less. top tenors do we have <laughs> in this decade? I hope at least ten, if not more. <laughs> Honestly, though, Raging Bull, I I wish you guys had seen it because it's 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 so fucking good. Yeah, for me, as Jeremy lists these movies, I'm I'm finding out more movies that came out in this in this year. Yeah, yeah, and that'll <laughs> continue to happen throughout. I had Raging Bull, which I haven't seen, Bob, but I, I know it's a famous movie. Yeah. That's good. Caddyshack, which I also haven't seen. Starting to think <laughs> I wouldn't like that movie, though. And then the three movies that I have seen are uh, The Shining, not a top tenner for me. Airplane, I don't. did you have that? Oh, yeah, you did. Nah, no. And then Empire Strikes Back, which I didn't know came out in 1980. It's one of, I've watched the first uh, set of the Star Wars movies, and uh, that, one, that one's actually good. On short and sweet, Empire Strikes Back and The Shining. Only two movies I've seen. Uh, I'm not going to call The Shining a top tenner for me. This is an easy Empire Strikes Back vote for myself. Yeah, I thought it was going to be easy for The Shining I before I knew that Empire Strikes yeah. Back. But yeah, I, I, I think Empire Strikes Back is just just a little bit better for me. I think it has to be because it's literally like one of the most... It's like famously known as one of the best sequels of all time. And probably the best Star Wars movie, without a doubt, yeah, right? No, I, absolutely. I, like, no doubt. Like, in your mind, you can't even compare anything else. Uh, I want to go with The Shining because it is top tenner. But I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to concur with you guys, and I'm going to go with The Empire Strikes for 1980. Wow, beating two of your top tenners. That's, that's incredible. <laughs> brutal. You know, I just, I just <laughs> I played to the crowd. I mean, even if I watched Raging Bull in preparation, 80 was one of the years where I felt pretty locked in with uh, Empire, so... Let's move on to 1981. First one wasn't too bad. Can we, we got can there. we go through nine more just as easily? We'll see. The more no. we drink, the harder this will get. Yeah, I don't. Hopefully, I don't spill on my piece of paper. The best picture of 1981 was Chariots of Fire. Biggest box office return: Raiders of the Lost Ark. Other movies include Mad Max 2: The Road Warrior, An American Werewolf in London, Time Bandits, Das Boot, Escape from New York, Halloween 2, Stripes. For Your Eyes Only, Taps, The Fox and the Hound, The Great Muppet Caper, Clash of the Titans, and The Evil Dead. Ben, what do you have for 1981? So I only had one movie that I have seen from this list, and that was Raiders of the Lost Ark. Uh, I think this was nominated for Best Picture. It was. And that's pretty incredible to me, because it's almost like a, like a superhero movie from back in the day. So it's cool to me that it was nominated. Uh, and then the other one that I had listed, which I don't think I would like, just thinking of uh, anything Bill Murray's in, I don't think I like anymore. And I, like so stripes, I, stripes, <laughs> stripes. I like that your list is movies you've seen <laughs> and movies you may or may not like if you watch them. <laughs> it's an interesting way you went about it. Yeah, that's how I got there. Bob, what about you? Um, I have Raiders of the Lost Ark, which I also have not seen. But I <laughs> <laughs> had to throw it on the list, you know? This um, is great. I had, 
I had if you're if you're a long time listener of the podcast, as in you've listened to the last like two or three, you know that I've seen Escape from New York. Put it on the list. Figured why not? I also put Halloween two on the list just because I like the Halloween movies. I think that was probably the last good one until they made the remake in twenty eighteen. Um, and then I also had an American Werewolf in London. Just, uh, just a good movie. Good, good one that I like a lot. Uh, yeah, so I have seen Raiders of the Lost Ark. And I'm pretty sure I've seen The Fox and the Hound. Couldn't tell you what it's about, but I'm pretty sure I've seen it. And then, uh, within pretty self-explanatory. The, yeah, I mean, there's a fox in it, there's a hound in it. What more do you need? Uh, within the last three months, I've watched An American Werewolf in London and, on Bob's recommendation, Escape from New York. I like both of those movies. I don't think I liked either of them as much as Raiders, though. Raiders is the best uh, Indiana Jones movie. I might make a case for The Last Crusade later on, but I'm not going to argue with you. Uh, actually, you know, maybe it's the Crystal Skull one with Shia LaBeouf, now that I'm actually thinking about it. But yeah, I'm, I'm with Jared on this one. I'm going Ra- Raiders of the Lost Ark. Bob, are you going to vote for a movie you haven't seen? <laughs> No, I don't think I am. I'm going to go with uh, American Werewolf in London because I really like that movie. And I already lost because Raiders of the Lost Ark looks like it's taken the year 1981. A movie that Ben has not seen. Neither have I. No, I've seen it. I've seen Raiders of oh, the Lost okay. Ark. Don't worry. It's the one I did see. <laughs> American Werewolf, Werewolf in London, though, was good. I didn't know what to expect going into it, and that movie just ends. Yeah a weird one i don't know i haven't seen it in a while but i always i always liked it a lot a few times i've seen it. that was one that was one of the first 80s movies that kind of like kicked off the whole thing for me of watching them and that's when i realized they will just put boobs in every 80s movie no matter what great it's a different time and it, it'll be pg up until 1984 i think that one was rated <laughs> r though there's a lot of people getting killed let's move on to 1982 when the best picture was gandhi Biggest box office return, E.T. the Extraterrestrial. Other movies include Blade Runner, Fast Times at Ridgemont High, The Thing, The Dark Crystal, The King of Comedy, Tron, Sophie's Choice, Grease 2, Poltergeist, First Blood, Conan the Barbarian, Rocky 3, Star Trek 2, The Wrath of Khan. Bob, what do you got for 1982? Yeah, I just want to say that Gandhi, that movie sucks. <laughs> I... <laughs> <laughs> had to watch it in one of my history classes in college. I don't know for what reason. It's like fucking long I, I think as shit. He, I think he was still alive when this came out. I don't fucking... I hope <laughs> it killed him. I mean, this, this fucking movie was horrible. Oh my god, it was so fucking boring. Ugh. I, I didn't, obviously didn't see the whole so thing. So that's on your list? <laughs> yeah. No, that one is... That is on my worst... That should be a punishment movie. Um, I put... For 1982, I have The King of Comedy. I have First Blood, the first Rambo movie. Uh, and then I also doubled down th- with the Sly Stallone. I threw in Rocky Three, which oh, that's, that's everyone's funny. favorite Rocky. That's a, that's that's the people's Rocky. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I also threw uh, Blade Runner with Harrison Ford in it, and I uh, haven't seen that movie yet. But that's it is it is number one on, <laughs> number one on my list of movies to watch from 1982. And that, from 1982, just say it. Each number year. one on my 1982 list is to watch Blade Runner. I yeah, uh, I the first movie I'll go with is the movie I haven't seen. Jared, I don't think you said it. The verdict. I did not say it. Hey. Yeah, that's one. That's uh, my number one movie that I want to watch from 1982. <laughs> I had ET because I'm not a weirdo and I've seen ET. Bob, that's pretty incredible. ET. That's pretty incredible. That, that's number two on the list to watch from 1982. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then I had Fast Times at Ridgemont High, and then also King of Comedy. I had E.T. as well. I, everyone has seen E.T., obviously. <laughs> Who hasn't? Uh, I've seen Blade Runner. I don't particularly like Blade Runner. Oh, I, shit. I know it's like a cult classic and it has a very big fan base. I'm not one of those people. I've not yet seen the sequel either, which I believe is on HBO Max as well. But uh, I did, however, watch Fast Times at Ridgemont High for the first time. And then, of course, we all watched The King of Comedy for uh, the episode with my brother. Uh... I think I got to go with uh, The King of Comedy on this one. Again, Blade Runner not really doing anything for me. Fast Times was probably the most 80s movie I've ever seen by uh, modern standards. There's some things that uh, do not hold up very well. Uh, 
That being said, that entire movie is just a vibe. There's really no story. That being said, King and Comedy still has my vote. See, um, for me, it's between Rocky Three and First Blood. Whatever Sylvester Stallone movie you guys want to give me, I'm going to go Rocky Three would be that I'm leaning to. I feel like Ben's more likely to pick that one. But yeah, I'm, it's, you're going to notice this on my list. It's pretty heavy on Sylvester Stallone. I think that's fair. He's, he's probably the biggest winner of the 80s, and I think I've seen zero of his movies. So, Oof. I'm sure I've seen Rocky Three. The one with Mr. T. Yeah. The People's Rock. I mean, I've definitely... <laughs> the People's Rock. Everyone knows it. Is I've that... definitely seen at least parts of all the Rocky movies. The only ones I know I've seen, like, for real, for real, are one and four. Man, we, this is going to be a tough year for us to pick because I'm leaning towards E.T. because it brings out, like, I saw this when I was a younger kid and it's, like, brings out the child in me when I see it. Uh, I watch the Drew Barrymore show every single day. So, uh, but if we're going to be stuck, I'm not, I'm going to go with the one I've Rocky seen. Rocky or First Blood? <laughs> you know what? Because, because I'm not going to vote for Rocky again, I, obviously, I think I would like the King of Comedy better, but because I... I won't say Sylvester Stallone for anything else, so we'll, we'll give Rocky three. The, the people's Rocky. The people's Rockies. It's oh, two right here. At least we got one. Okay. <laughs> Rocky three, the best movie of 1982. Mark it. Hard push for this one at the end, too. <laughs> no, it fucking is. Is this up. even your favorite Rocky movie? <laughs> no, it's later in the list. <laughs> we got a few more years till we get to my favorite Rocky movie. Let's move on to 1983. The best picture was Terms of Endearment. Biggest box office take Star Wars Episode VI, Return of the Jedi. Other movies include The Outsiders, Superman Three, War Games, Scarface, Cujo, Octopussy, The Right Stuff, Trading Places, Risky Business, Sudden Impact, and Mr. Mom. Ben, I think we're going to kick it to you. What was your favorite, or what movies have you seen in 1983? And what movies do you think you'd like in 1983? Well, I had... Oh, oh, okay. I was looking at the wrong the wrong year. So this one's easier for me. I've only seen one of these movies, and it was The Outsiders. I think this one's like a cult classic within our friend group, but I don't think I've even seen this in like 10 years. But, uh... Yeah, my other one was Trading Places. You saw Return of the Jedi. Did I? That's yeah, the third of the original oh, the, trilogy. I've also seen Return of the... <laughs> The number six threw me off. <laughs> but yeah, I have seen Return of the Jedi. Oh man, this, this is going to be tough for me, I guess, when it comes down to it. Because I don't remember either of those movies then that I've seen. But yeah, Trading Places, I tried to watch that instead of Midnight Run when we were doing 80s movies. And it, you, you had to pay for it, so I had to, had to skip that one. Definitely high up on my list, though, of movies to watch from 1983. Bob, what movies do you want to watch from this year? <laughs> So, um, I've actually seen every one of the movies on my list. For, for, You're going to say for Jer's this, list. For this year. For this year. Uh, but I have Return of the Jedi, obviously. I have The Outsiders, obviously. I would love to see. I've said this before. I don't think I've ever said it on the podcast. But a The reboot. Outsiders. A reboot. Exactly. How great would that be? With you modern... said it right here, sitting right in that chair. I don't think <laughs> I've ever said it to you guys, ever. But it would be amazing to see a reboot with modern day up and coming actors all the same roles, kind of like how that movie was back in the day. Uh, same exact movie. So, word, shot for shot, <laughs> word for word. Let's just, do, you know what? Same actors. <laughs> but they're, they're all their dads, and then their sons are cast as themselves. Yeah, we'll do that. Okay. It'll be tough to get Swayze. Okay. Oh, I also have uh, Scarface. Good movie. Um, and I have one that you didn't mention, Jeremy. I don't know how you missed this one. Uh, Christine. You guys know what Christine's about? No, I think it's pretty obvious why he didn't have it. It's a Stephen King movie where a car comes to life and kills people. You've seen that movie? I watched that movie, and yes, I watched it on Amazon Prime, but the Amazon Prime with ads, which there's only like five movies on there that have ads. <laughs> this was one of them. And yeah, it was, uh, it was interesting. It wasn't bad. Just a generic, shitty Stephen King movie, but uh, I had to put it on the list. Shout out to Christine if you're, if you're listening. <laughs> uh, yeah, my, mine was short and sweet. Return of the Jedi and The Outsiders. I've seen parts of War Games. I don't think I've seen parts of anything else on this list. But given those two, and I went heavy for Empire, but I, I'm going to lean towards The Outsiders personally. Yeah, I'm going Outsiders, I think, too, just because I haven't seen that movie in like 10 years, and I remember it more than seeing uh, Return of the Jedi, which I watched last summer. I'm going to go Outsiders. 
but I did want to do Return of the Jedi, but that's I we can't have two Star Wars movies. That would be so fucked. Like, yeah, that's so why I'm we're gonna, not I'm gonna, gonna have. Outsiders. That's the same reason we're not gonna have two Rockies. You wait, <laughs> wait till we get there. We could do a Star Wars rule <laughs> if you'd like, Bob. No, those aren't good enough. I don't know what would happen, but we can do it <laughs> as long as we say it enough. It'll happen. Let's move on to 1984. The best picture was Amadeus. Biggest box office return, Beverly Hills Cop. Other movies include The Karate Kid, Dune, Once Upon a Time in America, Gremlins, The Natural, The Neverending Story, Sixteen Candles, Splash, Police Academy, Footloose, The Terminator, A Nightmare on Elm Street, Purple Rain, Revenge of the Nerds, The Muppets Take Manhattan, Ghostbusters, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, Star Trek Three: The Search for Spock, Red Dawn, and Break Into Electric Boogaloo. Bob, what do you got for 1984? 1984. George Orwell's 1984. Yes, 1984, I have Ghostbusters. Sorry. Uh, I also have The Terminator, a movie I have not seen. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I had to put it on there, though. I also have Nightmare on Elm Street, which is one of my favorite Halloween classic of mine. Top Tenner? Top Ten Halloween movie. Wow. Which is a whole other can of worms. <laughs> we don't have time for that. Is that it? That's it. That's, that's, all, that's, okay. all, I, that's all I fucking got, man. Thanks for, thanks for letting hard. us know. It okay. was year. This was, uh, this was one of my longer years here. I'll start with the, the one movie that I haven't seen on my list, but shout out to Buffalo The Natural. I almost want, I think that's maybe the most talked about movie that none of us have seen. <laughs> yeah, Without yeah a that's... Doubt. That, that's high up on my 84 list. Um, not Ghostbusters, I specifically wrote. I refuse to even have this. If you guys gang up on me and this one's 1984, I'll, I'll leave. You guys Ooh, can do the rest of, of the decade. Until you, you, you said it, and now we're talking about it. Uh, Police Academy, I've seen once. Indiana Jones, Temple of Doom. And then possibly my, one of my uh, favorites coming into this, Beverly Hills Cop. I fucking love this movie so much. It's so funny. It's, I think, Eddie Murphy's best movie of all it. time. You, you should watch it. I think you'd really like it. Uh, yeah, so I think we know where I'm going to vote for this one, but Jared, do your list first. Movies I've seen, Never Ending Story, saw it forever ago, Revenge of the Nerds, saw it forever ago, Red Dawn, saw it forever ago. None of those movies uh, really resonate with me too much. I did watch for the first time recently Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. I'd never seen the second and third Indiana Jones movies. Temple of Doom kind of sucks. Yeah, it's the it's the worst. Well, I, I just forget Crystal Skull exists. I think but, it's worse than Crystal Skull. Well, I think I've only seen it once and when I was way younger, so I can't even comment. And I've seen Crystal, Crystal Skull ten times. So. Yeah, of course. I watched it last night in preparation for this, but yeah. Um, and then my pick is an easy one for this year. It's Ghostbusters, whether Ben likes it or not. Of the movies I've <sighs> seen... I would say it's the best of 84. I've not seen Beverly Hills Cop, obviously. A well-respected movie as well. Honestly, we should pause this podcast so you guys can watch the movie so we can get this year right. Beverly Hills Cop. There's a reason it was the best or most watched movie of 1984. It's just the best movie. It might be the best movie of this decade, and it's it's not even going to make it out of 84 because of Jeremy's stupid... Yeah, Jeremy's logic earlier of the less movies you see. Yeah, they haven't seen this movie, so it's not going to get the love. But my vote is for Beverly Hills Cop. Fuck you, Bob, if you say Ghostbusters. What happens if we have a three-way? <laughs> what happens then? Then Honestly, we go with box office. If I'm being honest, I do like Nightmare on Elm Street more than Ghostbusters. Uh, I'm not going to vote for Terminator because <laughs> I haven't seen it. But uh, if we're just going... And they're both... Honestly, on now Ghostbusters will be on my... Might be on my top 10 Halloween movies list. But... Uh, <laughs> Oh man, I do want to, my actual vote, if you guys hadn't fucked this up and both done <laughs> opposites, would have been for Nightmare on Elm Street, but I think I have to go Ghostbusters, I'm sorry. This is ben. so, I fucking hate this year. Alright, well I'm going to lock in my vote for uh, Beverly Hills Cop. Ooh. Wow, thank you. We're going Beverly Hills Cop, because that, that's the better movie. I, I realize it probably will have a tough way to get the, the 80s with only one of us seeing it, but. We're doing Beverly Hills Cop for real? Okay, that's fine. Then I'm switching mine to Nightmare on Elm Street. <laughs> Fuck it. Let's move on to 1985, a shorter list for this year. Best picture was Out of Africa. Biggest box office return, Back to the Future. Other movies include The Breakfast Club, Clue, The Goonies, A View to a Kill, St. Almost Fire, Teen Wolf, Return to Oz, Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome, Rambo First Blood Part 2, Rocky 4, Pee-wee's Big Adventure, 
and Vision Quest. Yeah, it's me. Uh, so I've actually seen all three of my movies here. I just it's weird that Rambo: First Blood Part Two. It's kind of a almost an oxymoron. Is it what? Is, yeah. Isn't it Second Blood at that point? But uh, so I have The Goonies, great classic movie there. Breakfast Club, which I do not like at all, and Clue, which I thought was a terrible version of Knives Up. Good year, 1985. Wow, those are some <laughs> real stellar ones. Uh, I have probably the three most 80s movies of all time. I have Rocky IV. We called Rocky III the people's Rocky. Rocky IV <laughs> is America's Rocky. <laughs> Rocky IV, Jesus Christ. We're talk- we've mentioned on the pod other movies that made us almost join the military. Rocky Four, man. I am. Oh my god. I just that, want to cut you off here. I also watched Back to the Future. That that's. <laughs> that's totally okay. that All right. I I also I was going to say that then, but I forgot. I'm assuming yes, you've seen Back to the Future. Uh, but I have Rocky Four, quintessential '80s movie. Another quintessential. quintessential <laughs> you got it right the first time. Fuck. Another quintessential '80s movie. Ben, you just said it. Back to the fucking future. That is. Yeah. I, I don't oozes. know why. <laughs> I don't know why I forgot this movie existed when I was going You this. put a gun to my head and say, name an 80s movie. I'm probably going to say Back to the Future. Yeah. And Ben forgot that he saw it. <laughs> and then... If you put one to my head, it, it won't be Back to the Future. And then another movie that Ben also mentioned, The Breakfast Club. I think those three combined. Back to the Future. Did you Rocky like Four, Breakfast Club? And Breakfast Club? Uh, yeah, I enjoyed it. I, I kind of... I knew it was like a famous 80s movie. I, it was kind of something that I was kind of like late to the party watching. I think I saw it like maybe a couple years ago. Like full all the way through. I'd seen scenes. And at the end of it, I was like, okay, like, I know what everyone's talking about, you know? Like, but I was, know why you actually, it's the prequel to The Mighty Ducks. Emilio, <laughs> Emilio Estevez. Oh, Gordon yeah, Bombay, yeah. that's what, oh, my God. why do you think he's an alcoholic, dude? Uh, he's an asshole in this Seven movie. degrees of Emilio <laughs> Estevez right now, this is, <laughs> you're getting me there. But, uh, yeah, Jeremy, what do you got for 1985? Uh, well, I have all three that you mentioned, Rocky IV, being one of the few Rockies I've definitely seen all the way through. Back to the Future, I'm going to push hard for that one later on, because it is winning this year predicting that now i like the breakfast club i really like clue we had a whole podcast about how much i like clue and i recently watched saint almost fire which i didn't like i thought it was pretty doo-doo but uh i mean as much as clue means to me personally i do love that movie back to the future is a way better film maybe the best movie of the decade we'll find out it's definitely up there and uh easily the best of 85 in my opinion yeah before uh I knew it existed in this in this year. I was gonna go with the Goonies, but yeah, back to the future. This is the this is the easiest one for me. Yeah. Um if I'm being honest, I think Back to the Future is the winner, but gotta hold it down for my boy Sylvester Stallone. I am voting for Rocky Four. All right, moving on to nineteen eighty six. Best picture was Platoon. Biggest box office return, Top Gun. Other movies include Stand By Me, Short Circuit. Maximum Overdrive, Crocodile Dundee, Little Shop of Horrors, Pretty in Pink, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, Aliens, Big Trouble in Little China, Transformers the Movie, Star Trek IV, The Voyage Home. Bob, we'll start with you. 86, what you got? I got Ferris Bueller's Day Off, another quintessential 80s movie in my opinion. Uh, I also have a movie I haven't seen, Top Gun. Uh, uh, and then a third mo- or a second movie that I haven't seen, Aliens which is uh, number one on my <laughs> list of movies to watch from 1986. But uh, I know it's good. I want to see it really bad. I saw the first Aliens because I wanted to watch Aliens for this 80s, uh, best of the 80s podcast. I just didn't get time. Didn't have a chance to watch the sequel Aliens, but uh, put it on my list just because I will watch it soon. No, that's fair then. Uh, I had two movies from 1986. I had Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Don't know if I love that movie. I don't really like it. I don't think I like it. <laughs> I also have Jeremy didn't have this one, but Hoosiers. Fucking love Hoosiers. Hoosiers. Never seen it. Yeah. That's uh, probably the earliest, like, let me look back at this. The earliest sports movie I've ever seen. Jerry, what'd you have? I had uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off as well. And then I recently watched Big Trouble in Little China, which I actually watched before Escape from New York. And then uh, two nights ago, I watched Top Gun for the first time ever. Oh, shit. Uh, I wouldn't say I love any of these three movies. Probably the weakest year as far as uh, me having any strong opinion on them. That being said, I'm 
probably going to give it to Top Gun. I think of the three, that would be the first one I go back to. Um, yeah, that, that's my only reason. This is, this is a rough year. This is our worst year well, by far. I haven't seen Top Gun. Let's give it to Top Gun, Bob. Say Top Gun. Let's get past this year and move forward. Top Gun, 86. Fuck it. My, but my vote is also for Hoosiers. All right, let's see if we can do any better with 1987. The best picture was The Last Emperor. The biggest box office take, Three Men and a Baby. Other movies include Full Metal Jacket, Wall Street, Adventures in Babysitting, Predator, Robocop, Lethal Weapon, Spaceballs, Fatal Attraction, The Running Man, Good Morning Vietnam, Dirty Dancing, Scooby-Doo, and the Boo Brothers, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, Raising Arizona, Masters of the Universe, The Untouchables, The Witches of Eastwick, The Princess Bride, and Overboard. It's a lot of movies for you guys to have not seen. Ben, what about you? What do you got for 87? We're finally getting into some good years, and uh, I had Fatal Attraction, which I just saw recently. That was a good movie. I also had Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, which I think I've seen three times. Cry at the end of that every time. I think. Uh, did you have this on? Beverly Hills Cop 2? Is that on here? Uh, I, th- I just want to get the years right. I hope I... I think it's 80... Uh, I think it's 87, so we're just gonna... We'll since go you don't it. have it listed, we'll go with it. But that's uh, an actual good sequel. For, like, comedy movies usually don't have good sequels, but this is... A, the third one fucking sucks. Don't watch the third one. <laughs> but, and then I also had uh, Spaceballs. Uh, Which because one is it, Beverly Hills Chihuahua? That's... Uh, Eddie Murphy plays the Chihuahua on that one. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I've seen Spaceballs once before I saw any of the Star Wars movies. So, uh, so I didn't get many of the references, but, uh, but uh, I think I laughed a couple times. Bob, what did you have? Uh, I had Spaceballs on my list as well. Really liked that movie. Uh, and the only other one I had uh, was another Sylvester Stallone movie. That, that Jeremy, you, I, you, didn't, you glossed over. I don't know how you missed it. Over the Top. <laughs> Do you guys know what that movie's about? Arm wrestling. <laughs> it's a Sylvester Stallone arm wrestling movie. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> That's my vote, by the way, too. I'm, is that your list? That's You're it. Done? That's all okay. I need. I put Spaceballs just so I didn't have just one. There is <laughs> one best movie of 1987 for me, and it is Sylvester Stallone's wow. Over the Top. I thought this was a good year, too. It was. Over the, top. Over, the top. Over, the top. Over the Top came out in 87. It was uh, a good year. Jerry going to have to duke this one out, because I already see what he has. Yeah, this is, this is a good year, uh, except <laughs> I haven't seen any of the movies you guys just <laughs> named. Uh, I have seen Scooby-Doo and the Boo Brothers, a classic. And then within the last couple of months, I watched for the first time The Running Man, RoboCop, and last night, Full Metal Jacket. And then I rewatched The Princess Bride, maybe the best movie of the decade. That was one I wanted to push for very hard. I could be convinced on Full Metal Jacket. Watched it last night. Controversial opinion. Really fucking good movie. Don't know if me and Bob will be trying to convince you. But, no. but Princess Bride is like a huge cult. Yeah, that's a good movie. Originally, I, I was going to push very hard for The Princess Bride, not only for this year, but for the decade, hoping one of you had seen it, but it uh, doesn't sound I've like seen, that's the case. I've seen parts of it. I haven't seen the whole thing. No, I didn't like it enough to put it on my list, though, from the parts I've seen. Andre the Giant's in it, which I I just like. know Andre the Giant and um, Robin Wright's in it. That's all I know. Robin Wright and uh, Mandy Patinkin as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Thank you. Yeah. All right, well, Bob, you have over the top. Yeah, I'm, I'm, go- not, I'm not moving either. I'm, over- <laughs> I'm going with planes, trains, and automobiles. Jer, will you please break the tie? <laughs> oh, yeah, please. <laughs> Come on. It can't be over the top. Can we over the top? <laughs> that was fucking awesome. I'll give it to Princess Bride before I give it to fucking over the top. Uh, yeah, I'm not voting for over the top. Oh, my God. I can We're tell you that over the top soon. <laughs> I, granted, only heard good things about planes, trains, and automobiles. It would pain me to vote against the Princess Pride or Full Metal Jacket. And honestly, RoboCop and The Running Man, also really good movies. I'm sorry, but I feel like I have the perfect way to settle this year. We have an over-the-top match. <laughs> I, need, I need the gripper, I need the hand gripper, I need a padded surface, I need a shitload of chalk. <laughs> We're also going to need to oil up our biceps <laughs> like crazy. <laughs> that movie's awesome. <laughs> Bob, I have an idea for you. What if we institute the over-the-top rule? <laughs> oh, 
And we all acknowledge Over the Top is the best movie, not only of 1987, <laughs> but of the entire 1980s and maybe the 20th century. Okay. If, if you vote for everyone. But you have to break the tie between The Princess Bride and Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. Um, if, I'm, if I'm breaking the tie, in all honesty, though, yeah, if I'm breaking the tie, I'm going to have to go with Princess Bride because it's the one I've actually seen a majority of. So, yeah. I can live with that, and that, because fine. because I pick. because I know it's a, a respected. It's not Ghostbusters. I'm not. I'm not going to yeah. lose sleep. Our over dad's this. not going to be mad at us over Princess Bride. I don't think, unless they're pissed we didn't put over the top. In <laughs> I think you might be the only one disappointed by that choice, Bob. All right, here comes what 1988 is the uh, 2008 or 2004 of the 2012s. You can cut all that. I forget what we used to say though. We've been doing it so long, it's just <laughs> it's so hard. I think what you mean, Ben, is 1988 is the 1994 of the 2004 of the 2019 of movies. That's exactly what I was trying to... Thank you, Jer. I don't remember if that's entirely correct, but it's close enough. Anyway, 1988, rather. Best Picture and biggest box office return was Rain Man. Other movies include Willow, Beetlejuice, Who Framed Roger Rabbit, Big, My Neighbor Totoro, The Land Before Time... Die Hard, Scrooged, Twins, Bloodsport, Midnight Run, Child's Play, The Naked Gun, and Coming to America. Bob, what do you got for 88? 88. Over I... the top two. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> oh, man. Not like they redid Rocky, like a couple, they did Rocky Balboa when he was old and fought the, uh, like the up-and-comer. If they remake Over the Top <laughs> with him at like 70 years old, <laughs> oh, that'd be fucking sweet. Uh, anyway, for 88, I have Beetlejuice and Gorillas in the Mist, mostly because I have a boner for Sigourney Weaver, but, <laughs> uh, those are the only two. Jesus Christ, <laughs> you, this is tough, man. Yeah. Uh, at least, uh, yeah, uh, I had Rain Man because I, these are, have you seen Rain Man? Yes. Okay. It's starting to become like movies that like more and more I've right. seen. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, it gets worse for Bob. You guys, <laughs> I, <laughs> Early 80s, I'm hot. But once you get past, like, 80, 85, uh, once yeah. they stop making Rockies every other year, right? <laughs> Gotta resort to over the top. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, so I had Rain Man. I had Midnight Run. I had Coming to America. Not Coming to America, which I hear is one of the worst movies of 2021. Uh, I heard it was pretty faithful, like a good uh, remake. Or... I hear it's not great, though. I, I don't know. I haven't seen either of them. But... And then, obviously, Die Hard. Bob, I'm, a, I'm just kind of stunned you don't have Die Hard. Like, how did you not see Die Hard? That's, that's... My, oh, my favorite Christmas movie, you mean? <laughs> <laughs> I just, how did you not, have you not seen Die Hard? Uh, Die Hard I've seen bits and pieces of, but it's, I just, I... It's kind of the one I'm most stunned by that you haven't seen. It didn't come up on my Google search of movies of 1988, so That'll... I, I guess, for some reason I thought that was but, a 90s movie. But that doesn't explain that you haven't seen it. I haven't seen it start to finish. I'm just, yeah, I've it's on HBO pieces. Max now. Go watch Ooh, it. Maybe I should watch that. Is it over the top of anything? <laughs> Jerry, what'd you have? Uh, I had Beetlejuice, The Land Before Time. Have you guys not seen The Land Before Time? I didn't. Maybe when I was like three. I no, don't know. Landfra that's good. I really like that as well. Uh, I had Die Hard. Actually, I saw it for the first time in December. So barely didn't make Whoa. the cut. Really? Oh. Wow, this, that's kind of nuts to me because I feel like did that's you, one of the most days of movies. Christmas. We did watch it around Christmas. Yeah. Uh, Scrooged, another Christmas movie from that year. My parents' first date was uh, they went and saw Scrooge together. Shout out to Keith and Colleen. Shout Maybe out. You're listening. And then the two movies I watched recently, My Neighbor Totoro, the first Miyazaki film I've ever watched, and on Ben's recommendation, Midnight Run. Way to watch uh, both the recommendations. Mad respect. Me and Bob obviously didn't watch your movie, but really nice of you to watch our movie. RoboCop was really good. So was Midnight Run. And I honestly might put my vote towards Midnight Run. I could be convinced otherwise, though. You're not going to have to be because I'm going with Midnight Run. I like Die Hard a lot, but I might be... Uh... Falling into the trap of uh, recency bias here, but I really, really liked Midnight Run. Oh, I'm gonna go Beetlejuice. That's one. Of, that's one. That's of what I thought. Jerry Halloween, would go with Halloween top ten movies. Might be number one. Wow. Honestly, love Beetlejuice. Yeah, I mean, if you made a better case, maybe I could be persuaded. It might be recency bias as well, but I really enjoyed my viewing of Midnight Run only a couple days after uh, our podcast on it. All right, boys, you ready for the 10th and final year of 1980s? 1989, the best picture was Driving Miss Daisy. 
biggest box office return, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Other movies include Dead Poet Society, Field of Dreams, Roadhouse, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, Weekend of Bernie's, Major League, Batman, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, Turner and Hooch, When Harry Met Sally, Ghostbusters 2, Back to the Future Part 2, Lethal Weapon 2, The Little Mermaid, Star Trek V, The Final Frontier, Do the Right Thing, License to Kill, Peter Pan, Tango, and Cash. Ben, Ghostbusters 2? Snuck into your list? Jesus Christ, as you were listing all these movies, I'm like, I've seen a lot of these movies, I have to be writing these down. No, it uh, that did not uh, sneak into my list, even though I haven't seen it. I know that's that's a little confusing. Um, I I know I said earlier that I didn't pick any of the um, the Oscar winners, but I actually did see Driving Miss Daisy once. I just, I didn't think that one won. I must have just missed that in my, my research. Great, uh, great Morgan Freeman movie. And then I had Dead Poet Society, Field of Dreams, Last Crusade, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, which I think I've seen once, Major League, great movie, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, Jesus Christ, I've seen a lot of these movies, Back to the Future Part 2, and Peter Pan. No Little Mermaid for you? I have seen The Little Mermaid, so yeah, add that one to the end. Damn, Ben, impressive with his 1989 movies. Bob, how do you follow it up? There was a lot that I saw on that list too, but I didn't care to remember. Um, <laughs> I, the movies that I had written down were Batman, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, and Back to the Future Part 2. My list included uh, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, Back to the Future Part 2, Ghostbusters 2, The Little Mermaid, Peter Pan, and of course Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, which I watched for the first time recently. I realized I, I had seen most of that movie but I never actually just sat down and watched it beginning to end. I might argue that The Last Crusade is better than Raiders. I really liked that movie, and that's kind of where I'm leaning. I could also be persuaded with either the Ghostbusters or Back to the Future sequel, um, but it sounds don't like do it to me. Ben has seen the most and uh, several that I have not seen, so I don't, I don't really know where he's leaning towards. Well, I'll give you my opinion, but... Was Batman on your list? No, I, haven't, I hadn't seen it. I've never seen the 89 Batman. It's pretty good. It's worth a watch? Yeah, absolutely. So I was leaning more towards Dead Poet Society. I watched this movie like four times. This I like this as in uh, for Robert, Robin Williams movies. I like this movie better than um, Good Will Hunting. Those are like the two big Robin Williams movies. So Dead Poet Society is where I'm going, but I, I do like Last Crusade too. Um... I mean, Field of Dr- This is, like, a tough year for me. Big baseball not- movies for you this year. Yeah, none of these really, like, stick out, like, the most. I like Major League a lot. Like, a lot of these movies I just like, but none of them are, like, that's my movie. So yeah. this one's tough for me. You said you said Back to the Future or Ghostbusters sequel, and I know you guys haven't seen Batman, so that's not gonna... That would've been my pick. That but- could win just be- if, if it's over Ghostbusters, we'll yeah, pick Batman. Uh, Bat- Batman's really good. I can't believe you guys have not seen that one. It- it's definitely a trip if you're used to the other ones, and obviously we know Ben Affleck, Batman, Christian Bale, Batman, but Michael Keaton is like... That's- is that a standalone Batman movie, or is that like a no, trilogy too, then? So there's two with Michael Keaton in it, and then there's a there's two more that are like kind of like early They'd- 90s. But they didn't have their shit together. Yeah, those were really bad. The first two with Michael Keaton are, are okay, but... uh. Actually, he might not be even be in the second one. I might be wrong on that. But anyway, the first one's good. Jack Nicholson's the Joker, so. No, yeah. Interesting. Anyway, I don't think that one's going to get over here. So I think I'm going to start leaning heavily into Back to the Future Part 2. Is Back to the Future Part 2? They, they go to the future. 2015. Yeah, they go to the future. Okay. Hoverboard. That's yeah. the one I think I've, I've, I've only ever seen, like, the first and the second one. I know the third one, they go, like, into the wild, wild west, and yeah. I don't like that one. But I think I'm going to go with, if it's between Back to the Future Part 2 and Last Crusade, I'm probably leaning towards Last Crusade so Jeremy can, uh, can break the tie. But I'm leaning towards Last Crusade because I like Indiana Jones better than I like Back to the Future if we're talking trilogies here. That's tough, but if I'm breaking the tie between those two, I'm probably going to go Last Crusade only because I think, personally, Last Crusade is better than the two that precede it. Back to the Future Part 2, very good, but I think Part 1 is better. Yeah, I agree. And with that, we have 10 movies, 10 of the best, so we say, from 19... <laughs> According to us. From the 1980s. Ben, will you uh, recant our list here? 
So 1980 was Empire Strikes Back. 1981 was Raiders of the Lost Ark. 1982 was Rocky Three, The People's Rocky. That's what it's called, so I had to say that. 1983, The Outsiders. 1984, Beverly Hills Cop. 1985, Back to the Future. 1986, Top Gun. 1987, Princess Bride. 1988, Midnight Run. And 1989, Last Crusade. It'll probably take us about a half hour to figure out the best movie. Let's, let's do it the way we always do it. <laughs> let's, let's cut it to let, four. Let, let's cut it to one. <laughs> and it is Rocky <laughs> Honestly, though, like off of that list, the only ones that I would vote for in the end are Rocky Three, because you know I love Rocky, and Back to the Future. If I'm being honest, it's going to be hard for me to anyone else to convince me over Rocky Three or Back to the Future. Honestly, I'm I'm open to I'm open to discussion, though. Honestly, with more time, it might change, but my knee jerk reaction: top three would be Empire, Back to the Future, and The Princess Bride. I I could if I, if I need to add Empire to my list of three. Rocky Three, Back to the Future, and Empire. I'm not a huge Star Wars guy, but Empire Strikes Back probably makes it in my top three, along with Beverly Hills Cop and then Back to the Future. So if you're listening, you're like, well, this is obviously fucking Back to the Future. But there's Rocky Three to take into account. <laughs> and we haven't even thrown in Over the Top yet. Yeah. <laughs> the Over the Top rule. Can we just name Sylvester Stallone the greatest actor of the 80s, 90s, yeah, and no, 2000s, that... 2010s? <laughs> of all time is what I'm saying. He's, he walked so Mark Wahlberg could run. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, this is tough. Uh, it's How definitely not, not Rocky, Rocky 3. Movie. Jared, can you just also strike down Rocky 3 so we can take it out of it's consideration? It's not even the best Rocky movie that came out in the 80s, and Over the yeah. Top is far well, superior to any fault, of the Rocky whose movies. Whose fucking fault is that that Rocky 4 is an obvious? It's because we fucked up and gave Rocky 3 its due early, and then Rocky ah. 4 could not make it out then. All right, well, can I throw in, for your consideration, we'll combine the two movies. We'll make the Sylvester <laughs> Stallone rule. And it's all the Rockies that came out. So we have Rocky Three, Rocky Four, and Over the Top, and First Blood. Four movies in one, one actor, the Sylvester Stallone rule. I think I'm going to have to shut that one down. Okay, that's fine. Whatever. Bob, also, uh, Rocky Four came out the same year as Back to the Future. That is why Rocky <laughs> Four did not make it. So. Can I switch my vote? <laughs> you can. I, actually, I'm pretty sure I voted for Rocky Four. I think IV. you did. You can switch it to the Back I actually, to the I don't Future. Know, whatever. It, it's, uh... All right, well, let's just cancel some out right now. So it's not as much just as wait, I love Midnight just wait, Run. Just it's wait not Rocky, Midnight Run. Just wait on Rocky Three. <laughs> Just wait a minute. It's not Midnight Run. Let it go to like the final it's, four. It's not The Outsiders. It's not Raiders of the Lost Ark. No. It's not Top Gun because me and Bob haven't yeah. seen it. <laughs> yeah. It's not Top Gun. I can tell you that it's as well. Not, it's not Princess Bride. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. that wasn't my top three. I'm not going to vote for it's it. It's not Princess Bride. I'll read no, it. Yeah, <laughs> shut, that shut the fuck down. Somehow I haven't crossed out Rocky 3 yet. I'll go ahead and do that right no, now. No, 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 no. How many are left? We have, well, this is a little, little biased because I'm the one crossing it out. What we have left is Empire Strikes Back, Beverly Hills Cop. Beverly Hills Cop is out. <laughs> Get that shit off the list. Okay, fuck both you guys. And then Back to the Future and Last Crusade. I'm guessing Last we're going to take Last out. Crusade off. Okay, so we're between... Empire Strikes Back and Back to the Future. I and think that's, that's fair. So from 1980 and 1985. But we're going to say Rocky finished third. In order of... So <laughs> that's just the <laughs> rule, finished third. All right, we'll give him that. Okay. All right, I would... But that means that the third, fourth, fifth, and sixth movies were Rocky Three, Rocky Four, Over the Top, <laughs> and First Blood. I guess. It's only totally fair. Yeah. That's how the rule works. Anyways, we're so we're between Empire and Back to the Future. I'll give my. I was kind of hoping we wouldn't end here because I don't know which one of these two I would pick. No, For I me, think I do. I'll go with first. I think Back to the Future inspires me a little more as a movie. Both of these movies are really fucking good, but when I watch one, one's just like, "Whoa, that was really good," and one makes me like happier at the end. Even though Marty almost ends up having sex with his mom, that's not the part of the movie I well, love so the most. Good. But I think Back to the Future just, I think it's more of like a, it's a movie movie. It's like, I think any 10-year-old kid could come up with a Star Wars idea. And as I'm saying this, any 10-year-old kid could come up with a time-traveling movie. Yeah. <laughs> Disregard that. I'm going Back to the Future. I just want to say that I think we have a good final take. Is that fair to say? Like, nobody, nobody's going to talk shit about Back to the Future and Empire Strikes Back. I'm proud like of us. Yeah, exactly. As, as shitty as we thought this was going to end up, and as much shit we thought we were going to yeah, get. As much as this, we embarrass ourselves on the way here, we got there. There's, there's two good ones, right? We're deciding between two good ones, but Jeremy, you're the most in the middle. So what do you think? Uh, I am very, very in the middle. Without The Princess Bride, which I might say edges these two out for me. 
Too bad it was crossed out. Yeah, th- this one is truly a coin flip, but for whatever reason, you know, maybe if we were recording tomorrow, I'd feel the opposite. I am just ever so slightly leaning towards Back to the Future. And I couldn't even really tell you why Ben went on this whole thing about how inspiring <laughs> this movie is to him. I Shout out nothing. to Ty Hughes. He won't listen to this, but he loves Back to the Future. I got True. nothing other than I really like both of these movies. Maybe, maybe it's the fact that Star Wars has kind of been tainted that shouldn't affect my opinion of this movie, this masterpiece. But for whatever reason, right now, I'm slightly leaning towards Back to the Future. Wow, can you convince him to change it to Empire Strikes Back, or are you going to make this a clean sweep? No, I think I'm going to make it a clean sweep. I said it earlier in the podcast, if you put a gun to my head and told me to name an 80s movie, I'm probably going to say Back to the Future. And I think for that reason, I've said it multiple times, the quintessential 80s movie. That, this is the actual. Bob's word of the day. Quintessential <laughs> 80s movie. So I think, I think it, I'm going to make it a clean sweep. It is Back to the Future. I will say wasn't sure that we would get there not just to back to the future but to the end of this decade yeah i thought it was it was a little bit of a struggle i once we had all the movies written down i was like fuck cuz i think 2000s was the easiest when we went with dark knight couldn't even tell you what we went with for 90s can someone refresh my memory could wolf of wall street was good fellas the good fellas, fellas okay which lost to a movie that <laughs> wasn't even mentioned in uh, the 2000s uh, i mentioned it <laughs> So, so what do we know what our decades are? We know is 2010s is Wolf of Wall Street. Then Dark Knight. Dark Knight. Goodfellas. Goodfellas. Back to the Future. Future. That's not bad. That's a good uh, Mount Rushmore right there. The movies that got left on by the wayside are, you know, up for debate. But I think if you look at those, that's not horrible. As much as there might have been movies that we missed, do you think that how great of a movie Back to the Future is overshadows any of the movies that we could have missed or any of the bullshit we're probably going to catch for this? I rank Back to the Future very high, not just for the 80s, but for all movies. So. Yes. I think we got it right. Uh, like, ones that I haven't seen, like Ro- like Rocky, I think could like have bigger considerations, and I'm just like, I-, I never just got into that franchise. And then maybe like Top Gun, but haven't seen that movie. So it's like, those seem like 80s movies to me as well. But like, Empire Strikes Back doesn't really hit me as like an 80s movie. It's more like, I just think Star it's a Star Wars, Wars movie. movie. Yeah. But like, Back to the Future is an 80s movie to me. So I think, I feel like we got it right. Of the 13 new movies I watched, two of them made the final 10. I don't know about that. (laughs) All right, boys, you excited for next week when we do Best of the 70s? (laughs) Oh, God. No, actually, uh, next week we are... Rocky Rocky 1 and 2 came out in the 70s, so (laughs) I know what I'd pick. (laughs) Next week we are reviewing So did fucking Godfather. Sorry, Jerry. (laughs) Not dead yet. (laughs) Next week, we are reviewing Godzilla vs. King Kong, I think is the name of the movie. Are you guys excited for that? No. I'm not a huge uh, Godzilla guy, but loved King Kong. I am excited for this, and I think we're going to have our biggest guest that we have. We, the I'm biggest, excited for that. The biggest movie boy is, in fact, being called back in, a fan favorite of yours and mine. But yeah, we, uh, we've got that to look forward to next week. Maybe not look forward to it. I'm honestly... As far as the movie goes, not super excited for Does it. Does this come out on Friday? Is that on Wednesday? Oh, okay, I'm actually excited about that because I hate when the movies come out on Friday and we have like... That really fucks up my week. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. All right, well, until then, thank you all for listening. And remember, we are not qualified to have this podcast. We'll see you next week. <laughs>